Good morning, Quite Copter 101. And before we get started, let me get the shout outs out of the way. Today's shout outs goes to two people Steve Bruner and Steve B. <laughs> Steve Bruner and Steve B were both the uh, first to say first to one of my recent videos, and they win a shout out. Gee, I hope they're not the same people, though. Steve Bruner and Steve B. That's kind of close. Okay, what do I got for you? This is the new XL Van X218S Racer. Okay, it's a nice size racer. Hefty little thing, uh, or hefty thing. Um, I think it's 330 grams, I believe, if I remember correctly. Let's take a close look at this thing and go from the top to the bottom and see what we got here. Now, this is available in Bind and Fly with Free Sky transmitter. Uh, that's what I got. It's available in Plug and Play that you provide your own transmitter. And it's available also in kit form where you put it together and provide your own transmitter. Now the difference in price between the Bind and Fly assembled version and the kit version is only $15. So um, let's do the math here folks. You know, I recommend getting the Bind and Fly version. Uh, save yourself some hassle. But uh, some folks like to put things together and they're willing to, you know, take that price difference there, but that's not much of a price difference. Okay, let's go from, what else do we got here? Um, we have, notice this RPSMA antenna stuck in here, right-hand circular polarized. This is a nifty little antenna, it's, and what I like about this design is, you know, it has an RPSMA connector inside here, but this antenna is down and nice and snug and close, you know, less likely to get damaged, hopefully, in a crash, and I think that was their idea with this type of design for that antenna. Now, to go with that antenna, we have a 48-channel switchable uh, FPV uh, transmitter uh, with uh, 0, uh, 25, 100, and 600 milliwatts switchable. You can use this button right here to do such, or you can set it up um, to do such using the switches of your transmitter. Uh, other things on this, uh, we got an Omnibus F4 flight control board loaded up with Betaflight 3.3.3 from May of this year. Um, you got your little micro SD card slot for logging your flight. Uh, we got a BL Heli 4S. Um, Electronic speed controller, ESC, that's 4 in 1 ESC, powers all four of these motors. And let's talk about those motors. These are uh, Skystar ST2306 KV2500 motors. Nice large diameter on these. Hopefully it will provide lots of punch and power to this drone. We'll find out here shortly. And I did not mention the camera itself. It's a 600 TVL CCD camera. Uh, looks like a Swift a Mini clone uh, type of camera. It does not say run cam on it anywhere. <laughs> run cam Swift. But, you know, it's a clone, in other words. And, you know, it should provide nice image quality. We'll find out here shortly. Now, additional thing about these motors I didn't forgot to mention is, you know, notice we got these nice bumpers around the motors to protect them. But the motors are only held by three different screws. So, I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. I don't think so, but, you know, just keep in mind, this is a th held in place by three screws instead of four screws. And finally, uh, looking at the frame, we got a nice, uh, stiff, thick <laughs> frame. Could easily be, uh, you know, the arms can easily be re replaced uh, via these two screws here, so this should work very well also in terms of crashability. <laughs> of this particular drone. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything yet. You know, I mentioned 330 grams. Oh, 50, 43 propellers on here. Uh, they should, they got some nice pitch on them, so I'm hoping they, they provide a lot of oomph here. And finally, uh, this is a 4S um, drone. Uh, they, some people are saying, well, you can go up to 6S on uh, the ESC and the motors, but uh, I think the limiting factor is the flight control board, I believe. The voltage of the flight control board uh, could only handle up through uh, 4S batteries. So let's go for a flight of this thing and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Okay, as usual, we're going to start off with line of sight flight first. Um, the way I set this up, and you're going to have to set this up in beta flight because it was not set up, is I have this set that this switch here set the angle. Uh, this switch here is air mode, and all the way down is acro. We're going to start off in angle line of sight, and this switch here is set for disarm the switch for beeper by the way this does come with a beeper but you have to install it yourself 
I did not do that. It does not have the beeper installed with it. And finally, you can arm the motors by bringing them this switch all the way down. So motors are armed. We are in angle. Let's take it up and fly it around in angle first and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. <laughs> angle mode. I see. I should have balanced <laughs> balanced it. Um, it's not entirely balanced perfectly, but let's bring it over again and it's got a punch. <laughs> got a punch to it. So yeah, this, those uh, props and motors and ESCs provide plenty of power to this thing. Bringing it over again up so you can see it up close. This is it up close. Turn it, turn it, turn it. And away it goes. Okay, let's fly this thing and um, bring it back down. We're going to take it up an acro and see how it performs. So, hope you enjoyed the second part of this flight. Let's get it back on the pad first. And putting it down. Plop. Okay, we should be good to go. So, hold on, folks, and uh, put on my goggles, and we're going up an acro. Okay, how do you like my shirt today, folks? I forgot to mention that. Okay, I'm flying it today with a T8SG Jumper uh, V2 Plus, and also I'm using my FXT Viper goggles. I like these things. They provide a really nice view, especially with these CCD cameras, and today is no exception. So here, let me uh, select Acro, and arming the motors, and going up for the, top, for the flight. Let me get a first feel for it. Yeah, it flies kind of nicely. It's with the stock pigs. Coming down the road. Going around the bushes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, all in all, it's very responsive. Uh, the way it's set up out of the box, very responsive. So you got to be careful there, you know, don't kick over the sticks real hard when you first get this because it is set up to be responsive. <laughs> I mean, rapid reaction to your input. Let's come down low. Let's go do some low flying around the bushes and see how it performs around the bushes. Um, I'm noticing I'm not seeing any on-screen display information. I thought I had it turned off. I think I might have turned it off. I think I had it turned on. But I'm not seeing any. And I'm not sure what the issue there is. I think I might have turned it off by pressing those buttons. On. I was trying to set up the uh, transmitter. The FPV transmitter. And uh, I'm fiddling with the buttons to raise the uh, uh, milliwatt output. And I think I do have it set to 600 because it looks nice. And I'm pretty far distant. But uh, in doing so, I think I turned off the on-screen display. Now, that's an issue with this is documentation regarding the transmitter and regarding the on-screen display is kind of sparse. I was fiddling with it just to try to figure it out. But <laughs> So keep that in mind, dear. Uh, I'm sure there'll, there'll be people out there showing how, what they figured out regarding this transmitter, or FPV transmitter and its on-screen display. But right now, I don't have any on-screen display. But no matter, it's flying like a champ. And the video that I'm receiving looks exceptional from that camera. That camera's awesome. Nice camera. Really nice camera. And wow, I got some good range on this thing. So, that FPV range on this is really good too. So, I'm not seeing any breakup at all. I am seeing some uh, black lines up in the sky though. A little bit of black lines in the sky. But I don't think that's too big of an issue. 
not too big of an issue at all, folks, because <laughs> it's such a wonderful flyer. And right now, since I'm flying blind, we're not going to take the, we're not going to fly it until the motors die. I'm going to call it quits here shortly, but let's call it quits here now because uh, I don't feel comfortable flying it. I don't have a beeper on it to tell me low voltage. I should have done that. And I'm not seeing on screen display information. So we're going to bring it in. Where's that pad? It's a rider somewhere, ain't it? <laughs> I see the pad. <laughs> see, normally I can't see this pad. And normally I crash because I can't see. But with this VXT gog or FXT goggles and that CCD camera, it's exceptional uh, camera image I've seen. I'm sure it's not recording the same way. I wish it, you know, you could record the exact same way uh, that you see it. But <laughs> I can't show you the, what I'm seeing through these goggles in terms of clarity. It's, it's actually really nice. Really, really nice. Um... Let's go over, give me my thoughts on the quadcopter. Take that hat, thank you, my nut. Not even close. <laughs> well, it wasn't a crash landing. Normally I crash these things in the landing because I can't see. This one you can see real nice with that camera. I like that camera. Okay, thoughts on this. Plenty of power. Lots of power on this thing. Um, nice punch. You know, this would be a good freestyler. I'm, I'm guessing this that was the intent of this thing, the design, to do freestyling. Uh, but it was a racer. It was, it was zipping along pretty well too. So, um, things I don't like is the on-screen display. <laughs> I, I couldn't get it going. I'm not sure it actually has on-screen display. I'm sure it does. I'm just, you know, I wasn't able to get it to work. And additionally, since I wasn't able to get it to work, I miss getting those. Menus being able to, you know, adjust PIDs and adjust uh, the frequency and channels using the on-screen display, you know. So, other than that, good, good quadcopter. It's just my problems. My main problem with it is um, the issues I'm having with the on-screen display. I hope it's not my fault. <laughs> Maybe it's in the design. Maybe it doesn't have on-screen display. I forgot to check that. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here, back again. I got the on-screen display to work, and the way I did it, it was pretty easy. I went first into uh, Betaflight and looked at um, the general settings under Betaflight to make sure that on-screen display was turned on. And indeed, it was turned on, so that was not the issue. So the thing I did next was I went to the on-screen display settings, and I noticed that on-screen display was set to NTSC. So what I did simply was switch it to uh, Auto, and then hit Save, and sure enough, on-screen display came up. Now, the reason you want this on-screen display, why I was so ranting about it, why it was so, you know, I felt it was so important was, let me show you. If you go, here's how you get into the menus, first off. If you move the throttle up to the center position and to the left and hold it there, and then move the right stick, the pitch roll stick, full up, that brings up the on-screen display menus. Now, under uh, the first one there, profiles, if you move the right stick to the right, you can, can enter into the profiles, and notice we can adjust the PIDs out in the field. So, you know, if you're, you're not uh, uh, happy with the current PIDs of your, your quadcopter while you're flying, just land it, you know, tweak some of the values, and then set it and go back into the air. And, you know, it's real quick and easy to do without needing to go into beta flight. That's very important to be able to do. That's, that's cool. Now, under features, if we go down and go under features and move to the right, and then we go down to VTX TR and then move to the right. Notice we can adjust the video transmitter using the controller only. You don't have to mess around with those buttons and hope that you got it right. <laughs> okay. And going down to under power, you know, you can adjust the frequency bands, uh, the frequency channels, and change them. But uh, another thing you can adjust is the power output of the transmitter. Notice I was set to 25. I thought I was set to a, a higher value, but it was working yesterday pretty well with 25. But let's notice, let's if I move to the right, we can select 100 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, 400 milliwatts, and even 600 milliwatts with this transmitter. But I'm going to go back down to 100. That's the one that I like to fly with, about 100 milliwatts. That's uh, good enough power to fly as far as I normally fly, so I don't need any more power than 100 milliwatts. And then I go down, move the stick down, and move it to the right to select set, and then confirm. So 
that's how it works, folks. Let me back out of this. Um, the on-screen display menu now works. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I wasn't happy yesterday when I was flying, but uh, now I am because it's important to be able to notice, you know, uh, notice what I got set on mine. I have the uh, battery power levels, both the total battery power on the right and the individual cell batteries, the average cell uh, free, or battery voltage on the left. That's the one that I normally watch. Once I get below 3.5 volts, I start thinking about landing. But also I got flight time, I got the flight mode that I'm flying in right now, it's stab, if I move it to the center, it's air, all the way down, it's showing acro. And also uh, the battery, uh, actually the warnings, I have the warnings set on the bottom there, saying the battery is less than full, and that's true. <laughs> so, so I hope you enjoyed this flight and uh, review, this is Quadcopter 101, signing out. <laughs>